Okay, so today I want to quickly go over a few things. A few things I've seen, videos from vloggers and stuff, that I completely disagree with because they're coming at this as the Z7 and Z6 at a different angle. They're coming at it as strictly photographers. Now, I understand there's a lot of photographers that aren't really happy with this camera, and especially with the battery grips. But you have to look at what I think Nikon's trying to do with these cameras. They're not trying to replace the D850 and the D500 with these cameras. Because those are the two that it would be the closest representative, even though the D500 is a crop sensor camera. It's still a professional camera. See, that's a crop sensor camera, but it's a professional camera. And everybody's like, well, this isn't a professional camera because it, it only has one memory card slot. Well, the GH3 wasn't a professional, was, or GH4 wasn't a professional camera, and it only had one camera slot, and it sold the, they sold the living crap out of the GH4 and used it for major motion pictures. So I would call that a professional camera. See, there's where the problem is with this whole scenario. Sorry about this mess back here. I got my clothes sitting on my desk where I was folding my clothes. Anyway, this is where the whole problem is with this camera. So here you have a Nikon. This is just the, my D600 sitting on the table. So the D600, while it's a great camera, it's a full-frame camera. The D750, full-frame camera, great camera. D800, D850, D810, full-frame cameras, great cameras. They, these cameras lean more towards photography. And everybody knows that because as a video shooter, people used to make fun of me. That every time, Everybody in the Wedding Cinema Forum was like, what camera do you shoot with? 90% shot with Canon. I'd say, I'd say probably about 70% now, but say about a year or two ago, 90% shot with Canon. Probably about 70% shoot with Canon, 10% shoot with Sony, about 10% shoot with Panasonic, and about 10% shoot, you know, mix it up with different like video cameras and stuff like that, not even DSLRs. I'm talking about the DSLR type of cameras, these bodies, the bodies like this. As a person who shoots video and photo at about 50 50 so half of my half of my work is vi is video and the other half is photography i'm i'm doing a i'm doing a, a photo shoot photo a wedding photography next weekend i've got a bunch of inquiries and a bunch of weddings coming up that are photo and video evenly split while i do shoot photography i have several that are just video coming up so i'm pretty much in the exact middle on this half of what i shoot is video half of what i shoot is photo look right now i'm recording this on a on a logitech c920 web camera i did that on purpose i don't normally shoot this on the web camera normally i shoot vlogs and stuff like that on this camera which is oops sorry i bumped my mic which is my panasonic lumix G85. So I'm going to take this off here real quick. I'm not going to take it off. I don't feel like taking it off. Anyway, this is what I shoot most of my vlogs with. I hold it out like this. I do the shots. I do my shots. I flip out the screen. You know, I do vlogs on this camera. Hold the screen out. I record with it. Boom. I can see myself in the little in the little screen. It's got a Autofocus is not great, but it's okay. It's got five axis image stabilization in the body. This camera is like 800 bucks, I think. Whatever. So, $800 camera, $200 mic, decent mic on it. Put a Rode Video Mic Pro. It's got the, the dead cat on it because I take it outside and shoot with it. But this is a vlogging camera. This is what I use to vlog with, right? So, since I use this camera to vlog, I don't really need this camera that I shoot with for weddings and events and I shoot photography with to be my vlogging camera. I don't care. I don't want this to be pointed at me and vlogging with it. I don't need it, right? I don't really need that one to be a vlogging camera. But what I do need is that one to have decent 4K video 
with decent autofocus so I can take one of these DSLRs, throw it on sticks, hit the record button, see what I'm going to capture, not have to click over to live view, click back and forth and all this other stuff. So I would like a mirrorless. I like the way this records video. I don't, the pictures from this aren't bad. If you're going to take pictures for family stuff and stuff like that, a little G85 or a GH5 or something like that is perfectly fine. So as a Nikon photo shooter, when it came time, I've been waiting to buy a camera to upgrade to a full frame mirrorless style camera like the Panasonic, but full, but, but a full frame version. There's no full frame version yet. Panasonic have just leaked on Micro Four Third rumors that the next Panasonic GH camera is going to be a full frame mirrorless camera. Panasonic is releasing a full frame mirrorless camera. I don't know if you have heard this yet, but you've heard it here first. It was just announced just a few minutes ago. Panasonic's next camera as a leak is supposed to be a full frame mirrorless camera. Now, if Panasonic comes out with a, that would be the only camera that would make me consider canceling my pre-order for the Z6. And you're like, why? The Z6 is not very professional. For photography, but for video, it's freaking incredible. It's an incredible video camera. From the videos that I have saw, I couldn't believe that Nikon actually made a video camera that focused as well, that, that seemed to have all the features that I would want in a mirrorless camera, that had autofocus, that was decent. Their autofocus is terrible. The autofocus on the G85 isn't very good either, but it's better than on the Nikon. So I shoot the G85 as a third camera, like a backup camera on the sticks. And right now I shoot with like the D750 or the D or the D850, uh, the 4K off of there. But even the 4K on the D850, it's while it's really good, there's no autofocus. It's a heavy camera. You can't throw it on a gimbal. See, the, these, all these YouTubers out there complaining that the, that the camera's not this, right? Well, I can't shoot it. Doesn't have two cameras, and you can't flip. Doesn't have a flippy screen. So see the front. I don't need the flippy screen because I'm not shooting. I'm not using it as a vlogging camera. I'm using it to shoot actual professional paid work. So for professional paid work, I don't need the screen to flip around. I'm not looking at myself. I'm, I'm filming a couple standing at the altar. I don't need the screen to flip around to the other side so they can see themselves. They can't see themselves from the altar, and I'm not going to want to see them. If I needed a monitor should, to show them, I would get one of those little Atmos Ninja 5s or something and put it on there, and then I'd have, uh, uncompre I'd have 422 10-bit off the Nikon, which no other DSLR has. So to me, it seems like the... The Z6 and Z7 are a win-win for me, somebody that shoots mostly video. It's a perfect companion to a D850 or a D500 or whatever it is, to a, to a, a Nikon DSLR that you're using for photography. This way, you've got a camera that is really good at photography. It's not as good as the professional cameras, but it's really good. And it's really, really good at video. And it does one job really, really well. Here's the thing. G85. It's pretty pretty good at video. I would not use it for professional photos. Not because it only has one card slot, although that is a that is a major factor. One card slot. You know what? For video, one card slot doesn't matter. We, we're used to shooting on one card slot. Even when you do redundancy, it, I mean, it's rare that you have two card slots and you're doing redundancy, doing video on both. The only time I ever used the two card slots was for overflow. And even then, I, it's been years since I've had a card fail. So if I was shooting XQD on the, Nikon, on the, on the Panasonic, I would like it even better because a lot less chance of, it, of the card failing. So for me, for somebody that shoots video a lot, half of my work is video. For somebody that shoots video, to be able to take a camera, this even this camera, even this little D600, D750 size camera with a, with a wide enough lens. This is just a little nifty 50, but you put a 24 millimeter lens on that and this thing's heavier and wider. This thing on a gimbal is heavy, right? 
I was extremely happy to hear angry photographer say that he was surprised how light the Z7 was. I was like, oh, perfect. It's light. Now I just need a light wide lens so I can put it on a gimbal and walk with it. Is a photographer going to put it on a gimbal? No. Photographers don't use gimbals. Why would they use a gimbal? Yeah, and you don't use a gimbal for, for uh, vlogging. You, I guess you could, but this with the end body stabilization, this works perfectly fine. I can walk around this with vlogging, and it's an $800 camera. It's not a $2,000 camera. So when, when I look at the situation of what these things are for, the people complaining the most are the people that wanted a, a professional photography camera, you know, and I'm sure one of those is coming, you know, but Nikon's looking at it going, we have to get in this mirrorless game for all these people that shoot video, weddings, events, stuff like that, not vloggers. Vloggers sped, you know, get on here and talk, but they don't, you know, vlog, uh, how, how, much, how much work is it to set this camera right here, point it at myself, point it at myself, and just have it record myself. And then, you know, like the angry photographer, he doesn't even edit the stupid things. I, 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 like, him, I like hearing him talk, but he doesn't. Jared Poland edits more. Tony and Chelsea edit more than him he just turns the thing on heck he walks into the frame and clips on a microphone you could do that with a web camera i'm using a web camera right now you don't even need this is a 99 dollars web camera what do you need is what do you need a two thousand dollar camera what do you need a two thousand or three thousand dollar camera to do a to do a vlog it's a vlog just point the camera at yourself and and let it rip especially him all he does is hit the button and start recording and records the mic walks up and clips it on and just syncs the audio, or I think that's plugged directly into his into the camera. I don't even think he has. And then he just dumps the file on there and uploads it, and puts a picture on there with a with a with a, you know, a shocking clickbait title. Whatever. Nothing against him. I like his opinions. I've purchased cameras and gear based on his opinion. Several cameras, several gear, such several things. I've used his recommendations. But I've used him for photography. I would not take his opinion for video. The guy doesn't do video, right? The guy, the, the guy who does video as much as I'm doing right now with a web camera. That's his video. So I don't need his opinion on video. He can stuff his opinion on video. I don't care. I like his opinion on cameras. As far as a camera goes, the Z7 and Z6 are not as good as the D850. I'm not, no doubt. I'm not questioning that. You know, of course, there's not as professional as a D850. Of course, they're not as professional as a D500. Heck, a D500 is more of a professional build body and stuff like that for photography than the than the than the Z6 and Z7. But the D D500 isn't a full frame. It crops in at 4K. I like the 4K footage, but it's still a crop cropped in footage. If you watch my review of the D500, I discuss how the footage looks fantastic, but it crops in. And I like the thing, the, if you notice my review, the thing I liked the most about the D5, D500 was that it had that uh, electronic image stabilization. The, D, the, the Z7 and Z6 have five axis in body stabilization, which is way better than that uh, electronic stabilization that was on the on the D500. So, look, you guys, you got to buy the cameras that are good for you, and don't listen to somebody else's opinion. Oh well, this camera is it's not professional. Doesn't have this. Doesn't have that. It's done. It's not professional. Gee, I sh I've been shooting professional video for since the 90s with one camera, one card in the cameras, all the way until the GH5, one camera. You look back, look at, go into my YouTube channel right now and scroll back. You'll see me do a, a review of a battery grip aftermarket for a GH2. GH2. That's how long I've been doing this. Way longer than that. I bought the GH1 when it first came out. I bought the GH2 when it first came out. The GH2 was the last camera I ever pre-ordered. That show, tells you something. I've loved Panasonic cameras. I still love Panasonic cameras. I love Sony cameras. I've owned Sonys. If you look on, if you look on my YouTube videos, scroll back and look, you'll see that I had a, a Sony, several Sony cameras, video cameras. I use Sony lav, Sony lav mics, wireless kits. I did a review of a Sony wireless kit. I've used Sonys. I love Sonys. I've used Panasonic. I love Panasonics. Right now, I shoot. 
50% photos with Nikon. So to me, the easiest match to match those two cameras up and be able to shoot video on the other cameras would be the Z6. The, the Nikon Z6 is a perfect match for somebody that does 50% video and 50% photo and they've already got Nikon lenses and shoot the photos with Nikon professional cameras like the D850 and D500. That's what makes the Z6 and Z7 attractive to those people, the people that want, the people that were just about to jump ship to Sony for the full frame or to Panasonic. Now that they're, they announced the, well, they're about to announce the next GH camera is going to be full frame. Boy, they Nikon really needs these cameras because that would be the only one that would make me jump out. Anyway, YouTube, that's my opinion. So give me a shout. Um, uh, Give this a video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you don't. Let me know what you guys think. You know, do we need it? Is it something that is it something that do do what do you think? Do you think that Nikon screwed it up even for video? To me, they didn't. To me, they did not screw it up for video. They nailed it for video. And if the autofocus is even close to that of say a GH5, I would pick the Nikon over the GH5 because the Nikon allows me to also shoot photos in raw, just like the what, the cameras that I currently have. Are they as professional and heavy duty and all that kind of stuff? No, but they look the same. If I took, put the picture side by side in Lightroom, they look the same on the same lenses. That's what I want. I, it doesn't need to be a replacement for the D850 or D500. It needs to be a, a replacement for this. This is what it needs to re replace. It needs to replace a Sony A7. It needs to keep me from buying a Sony A7 uh, R3. It needs to keep me from buying a GH5 or the next Panasonic. It doesn't need to keep me from buying the next G, uh, D850 or the D, D750 or D500 or whatever. That's not the market. The market is these cameras. The market is trying to buy the trying to keep you from buying these and that makes sense i buy this for vlogging obviously all right i'll let you later